Hello brothers and sisters, today is February the 24th. I have to share with you today the uh, second experience that I had uh, with my trip to heaven in the spirit. Um, it starts off, well I had got back up, got something to drink, you know, did my thing and then I went back to sleep. And as I laid back in that bed, before I had went back again, it started off as a dream. And it started off with me on a bus. And as I'm riding in this bus, I'm sitting next to two girls, a blonde, a brunette, and the rest of these, uh, this bus was completely full of people. We were headed off. Of course, my guess is that this is the rapture bus and we're all headed to um, wherever we're going. You know, I think that a lot of us will go to the island first. Um, so I'm on this bus and these two girls are telling me their story about how they used to be in love with uh, these, this fallen archangel. Um, he reminded me of an Egyptian false god. You know, how the old pharaohs used to worship all these different, like, you know, all these different false gods, well, that's what he looked like. And in a little bit, I tell you how, that when we went to heaven, we actually went down and we fought um, this this false uh, false god, fallen angel type person. But they were sad in that they, that they were once deceived by this being, but they had been delivered and they're saved. And they kind of, you know, for some reason, this is kind of a little, little side thing. They were telling me that he had lied to them when they were with him and said that he was dead. Uh, when he wasn't, he was alive or something like that. I, I'm confused about that part. But make a long story short, they were delivered through Christ and they were no longer deceived by this, this being the enemy. And they were now on the rapture bus and they were being delivered of all this by Jesus Christ, of course. So I'm going through this whole scene and all of a sudden, brothers and sisters, no more am I in this dream. I am once again in heaven and the scene is completely different than the heaven that I told you about the day before. You know, I, I wasn't flying around and all this. I was completely immersed in battle. There was a huge battle going on, but it wasn't like a battle like we were all worried and uh, we were all, you know, just, you know, worried for our lives and all this kind of stuff. We were there and we were completely joking around. And so all of a sudden, I'm amazed because I'm standing next to Jesus. Jesus is, is in front of me, about five feet in front of me. And he has a man to his left or to his right, kind of right next to him, and I'm kind of like in front of them, right in front of them, uh, watching them, and we're all talking, and the guy who was to Jesus' uh, right made a joke, and, you know, when he says something, it wasn't really a joke until Jesus chimed in. Jesus, who was loading some sort of weapon, like these weapons guys reminded me of a castle, old English castle type arrows like bow and arrows like crossbows but these things were huge and they were launching these weapons at the enemy the fallen angels and the whole time they were joking about it and the guy next to Jesus cracks a joke and Jesus so intelligently like he follows through with this joke and I'm sitting there like bawling I'm laughing and I'm cracking up because Jesus was extremely funny he's really funny everybody and he makes a joke, and I don't remember the joke, but it was something about, like, the guy was talking about where to aim the arrows, and Jesus was like, that's why I'm aiming it at such and such. He made a joke about who he was aiming the arrows at. And it, the way he said it, though, was so funny. We were all laughing, and I was laughing the hardest because, you know, I didn't know Jesus was like, I know he knew he was funny, he had a sense of humor, but, like, he made a joke that I didn't expect Jesus to make, you know, and it started to crack me up, and I'm laughing about it. And brothers and sisters, Jesus looks a lot like what we all imagine him to look like in our minds for the for most of us for the most part. The only difference is Jesus is bowed up. Jesus got some guns on him. He got some muscles. Jesus got some uh, you know, he's got some biceps. He's not a little skinny Jesus. Uh, you know, we serve a God who's a warrior, brothers and sisters. He has muscles and he but he looks a lot like we think what he does, you know, long brown hair, um, a lot like the pictures we see. Um, but like I said, he was muscular and he was all bowed up and he was extremely funny. And the scriptures, brothers and sisters, that talk about to be absent from the body is to be with, you know, God in heaven is so true. Because when I was with them, it's as if my spirit had always been with them. Like I never left. Like it wasn't like, oh my goodness, this is the Lord. And I'm sitting there bawling and I'm going to be like that when I see the Lord, of course. Because my awareness right now is a little different. But when I was there... In this different heaven, I believe it was closer to the earth because they're fighting the fallen. So it was more of a real reality to me, more like it is on this earth. And so as I'm, we're fighting these people, 
it's as if, you know, I had never left Jesus. It's like we had always been right next to each other working in the spiritual realm. And it was like, you know, like I said, it was like we always had been together. It's like I haven't spent all this time on the earth without him. My spirit had, has always been with him, you know, in that realm. Now, as we're sitting there firing these weapons at the fallen, the angels, I, for a second, want to clear a path for them because they want to go somewhere or something like that. So I go to the side and all of a sudden I'm like, a couple hundred feet away, hundred feet away, and I'm like at a side view. I see Jesus and somebody else walking up something, and I start getting, I take this side gun, everybody, like a crossbow type. I'm not sure if the weapons were totally symbolic or if they actually have these type of weapons. It was like a heavenly version of old antique, like these huge, like six foot long crossbow, whatever weapon they were firing, this thing was like launching them, like launching them at them. And so I take this side view, and as they're walking, without no fear, of course, I'm launching these shoes, like four, five, six foot long arrow type things, uh, about five or six, ten feet in front of them. Bop, 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 bop. I'm like basically destroying the enemy, and I'm clearing a path for Jesus and this uh, other person to walk. So they were not, like they walked unmolested, didn't have to do anything. They were having a path clear right before them. Like I was saying, brother and sister, Jesus is a warrior. Jesus is not, you know, Jesus is also the Lion of Judah. He's not always a lamb. After this, like I was saying, I remember going down to the lower levels. I was with a few archangels, and I didn't know it at the time, uh, but I was with another regular angel. He was a, 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 he was lower. He wasn't an archangel, but he was lower. I don't know his name, but I'm kind of thinking maybe it might have been my guardian angel. I'm not sure. But we got on this lower level, and we actually go to fight this false false god you know this egyptian style fallen archangel so we go defeat him and we start to travel back up to a completely higher level as i'm flying up and i'm traveling to a, a higher level in whatever heaven i was in i for some reason i'm thinking in my head you know wow like i'm going to these different levels i wonder if all the archangels all the angels can do that and i was like well i think the archangels can go the, to all the levels and as i said the word archangels boom two archangels appear right before me two archangels and a lower leveled angel and they're like, yeah, we're here. <laughs> you know, they're right there next to me. And I am start to talk to them. And as I talk to them, I notice that the lower angel is, he is working his little heart off. Like he is a warrior type guy. He is launching these arrows at things. And we're talking like generals while he's sitting there launching these arrows at all these, these fallen angels. And I'm sitting there and, you know, your heart is so different there. I mean, your heart is tender and full of love because Christ resides in you here. But there it's like on a whole new level. Christ truly is inside of you and you are you are talking and you are acting as if you were Christ because you are part of his body. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, you're doing so great, you know. I'm like, I'm encouraging this angel, letting him know that I'm like, please proud of him. You know, I, I don't use the word proud, but uh, I don't use the word pleased either. I was proud of him for how he was doing. And as I uh, encouraged him, the two archangels next to me, they joined in, yeah, yeah, you are doing really good, C good job. You know, they kind of joined in. They were showing love to this other angel uh, as I was doing. And I thought that was really neat. After we get done encouraging this lower angel, I'm talking to the two archangels that were next to me. And all of a sudden, we, were, we, want, to, we want to look at the battlefield, brothers and sisters. We want to see the battlefield. And our natural, our spiritual eyes could see really far, but we, we wanted to see all the different levels, all the different levels of heaven, their dimensions, I'm not sure. So they put on these things over their eyes. I don't know what they were. And all of a sudden, to my amazement, these two archangels become pillars, brothers and sisters. They become, they look like a pillar mixed in with a lighthouse, you know. There was like a pillar, something like you'd have in God's temple. Pillars, except at the very top of the pillow, pi pillar where their eyes would be, brothers and sisters, um, like it looked like a lighthouse, except it was like, you know, it could see out of the top of the pillar. So I'm not sure if they were using the Holy Spirit to see all the different levels, or if the Father gives them, or gives us the gifts to see everything through God's eyes but we were looking at everything and they I looked at them and they were two huge pillars uh, they were no longer look man form they looked like pillars except lighthouses kind of like in the top of their the top of the pillars they could see all these different levels and one of the angels kind of looks at me for a second he nods at me like pictures on you know and I'm like oh like okay so I'm like you guys I have uh, glasses so I put my little glass over my eyes like it was natural and boom, all of a sudden, I can see all the different levels. And I'm looking around, I'm checking out sector, level this, this level, that level, that level. And all of a sudden, I noticed that all the levels were at peace. 
except for one level and all I remember looking I remember the the level that wasn't at peace was level six so whatever level six was I noticed that there was fighting going on and we were sending all these angels to battle um, I believe in level six so I think that is truly amazing now I have more to share with you guys because it gets even better but before I do that I'm gonna share a couple quick scriptures with you uh, that I found pretty interesting and if you go to Revelations 3 12 it says him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go no more out and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God which is New Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God and I will write upon him my new name um, also and I'm gonna leave this guys these scriptures for you in the description box I also leave the you know what I call the song and whatever clip I use in the videos I usually put all this information for those of you who are wondering in the description box Revelations 10 1 it says and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was upon his head and his face was as it were the Sun and his feet as pillars of fire now in Galatians 2 9 before I read this I will tell you guys something that most of you probably don't know now the two two sons of Zebedee, Zebedee in the Bible James and John I will let you know right now that James is not his true name um, James was taken and named after King James uh, for the Bible James if you research it and please don't take my word on it go and do your research the brother of John James and John James real name is Jacob Yaakov sometimes they say Jacobus his name was never James brothers and sisters the brother of John is Jacob now in Galatians 2 9 it reads and when James Cephas and John who seemed to be pillars perceived the grace that was given unto me that they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go unto the he the heathen and they unto the circumcision I thought that was very interesting I'll leave that at that but um, also now is as if this stuff can't get any better like this truly was the best experience of my life these two nights of well this was actually the same night but what I'm about to share next I believe was the next night now this next night now it's a lot about Mount Zion Mount Zion brothers and sisters now if you go and I won't read it because it's long but if you go to Joel 2 it talks a lot about Mount Zion now I'm looking and I see this huge mountain that I know to be Mount Zion and all of a sudden me and a few others were at the top of this mountain and I know that we have to go down because there's this huge crack that is getting bigger and bigger and it's trying to engulf all my brothers and sisters and brothers we know the crack to be hell and before I continue um, and this crack I knew was enlarging and that those who it engulfed would go down in the earth so we all know that to be hell now if we read it in Isaiah 5 14 it says therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoices shall descend into it now as we go down to to help our brothers and sisters not get swallowed up into hell this big old crack that I'm seeing opened up in the ground um, this is very fascinating and I would say brothers and sisters to please go to God with all this and I will not interpret this stuff because I know what it means but uh, the Lord is revealing so much new revelation to us that unless you have ears to hear you you, you won't understand and I'll leave it at that I, I I'll just give it to you as I as I saw it and let you if you really want to investigate it to pray about it and do, and do your own research but so I with a few others I start to come down Jacob's ladder so as I start to come down Jacob's ladder and I must say as I woke up I realized that it wasn't the first time I believe that I came down Jacob's ladder and and I, I entered this this office you know when I when I say that brothers and sisters I mean that you know the Lord you know one time as I was on a, a, a sea boat headed to this this lady who called me Jacob and she said she was I knew she was my mother but I never met her before it was really strange and and I knew that you know she had told me she called me Jacob and the angel had told me that it wasn't the first mission that I'd been on and that my new mission pretty much I either would go back to Jacob or I'd be my name would be Jacob and that's that's all I see on that but I thought it was really interesting so I'm going down Jacob's ladder to the earth 
and I enter, I'm going to work. So basically just going to work. And I go and I enter this office of sorts and there are people and they're working. But one of the ladies that is in the chair trying to work and bring people to Christ on a computer, she looks disabled, like completely disabled. She can't work. So I took that, you know, as she was um, spiritually sick, that she was a watcher that wasn't doing her job. At least that's what I got of it. And so as I come down Jacob's ladder, I get behind this desk. I kind of, we gently move out the way. Um, and I get behind this computer and I start to go to work. Now, when I woke up, I thought this was amazing because um, isn't that kind of what a lot of us are doing right now? We're getting behind a computer. You know, we also go out and we do, you know, we try to help the Lord um, bring people to Christ on the streets and all that. But at the same time, we also are um, proselyting the gospel, the good news of Christ to people online. And so that's what I saw myself doing. I came down Jacob's Ladder to start to go to work. Now, this is where it gets really deep. And I'll just give you guys the dream most for the most part. I won't try to explain this to you. So I am there in this office and I was asked to... I knew that I was the first of the first, uh, like the first one or two of a group of apostles. And now I have never in my life ever, ever had anything in a dream about like a, any kind of apostle type thing. Yeah, of the apostles, but never any type thing um, insinuating things. And I won't go into that. But so I was there and Christ had asked me to help him call the first one or two, I believe in the dream, in the, I mean in the dream, in, in this place, wherever I was, it was, I was calling two. And I remember I invited them. I was asked to invite them, so I invited them to be apostles. As I invited him, to, the first guy to be an apostle, I look at him and I notice that, I can see what he looks like. He had long brown hair, he was had like a little beard, and he, um, you know, looked like somebody you would see like in, um, like back in the time of Jesus, you know, uh, kind of Hebrew style dressing man. Now, as I'm doing this and I'm working, the next thing that happens is seems even more amazing to me. And I'll just tell you what she said. I won't interpret this for you, but I'm just letting you know what happened. And as, as I'm doing this, this lady that works in this office, she comes and there's like one or two guys by me and she's in front of us and she looks at me. And the thing she tells me kind of blew me away and it's kind of been on my mind a lot lately what she said. but. She looks at me with this huge smile on her face, brothers and sisters, this huge smile. As if, you know how somebody looks at you and they kind of want to hint something to you, but they don't come out and tell you things, but they kind of smile at you and they say it. Well, she looked at me and she says, well, I don't know if I'm an anointed cherub or anything. And she has this huge smile and she's looking at me and I'm like, huh? I'm looking at it. I'm like, like kind of trying to like questioning why she's telling me that. Now, as she does that, all of a sudden, boom, I'm back at Mount Zion brothers and sisters and I see a gathering of souls I see a, a beautiful gathering of souls and at some point I remember a bunch of people being healed now I'll take you to Ezekiel 28 14 and it says now this is pretty cool now it says thou art the and it's talking about the enemy for a while but if you take out the enemy, you know, he, he, he wasn't the only person in heaven, a pre-existence that had, had certain types of jobs and all that, brothers and sisters. Now, I just thought it was neat. And I read, because I'm seeing this mountain all the time now. And in Ezekiel 28, 14, it reads, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Now, this is some of the stuff that I was giving, like I was hearing from this lady in this dream. And that's all I'll say on this. But, but, like I said, brothers and sisters, truly, truly amazing. And I wanted to, to get, and I've had more, brothers and sisters. I should have had two or three videos out to you since I released the first heaven experience a few days ago, but I haven't been been able to because once I released that first video, it must have. It must have really did some good to help Christ bring souls to him because I was extremely attacked for like two days now, no sleep. And the, the enemy did not want me getting this video out. So I have to believe that the Lord, you know, truly will use this for a testimony. And I testify to you, brothers and sisters, that heaven is real. It's not, it's not really like we think it is. 
We have these preconceived notions of how heaven is and who we are and who we were and who we will be brothers and sisters, but we gotta stop pitting God in a box. You know, God is not in a box. Um, we gotta start to rely not only on our scriptures, but we gotta also rely on the revelation from God. We have to test the spirits, we have to rely on God to reveal things to us. And I'm noticing that a lot of my brothers and sisters are, as they more get spiritually in tune, they're, they're getting a lot of revelation that I believe 10, 5, 2, one year ago, they would have never thought possible and they would have um, probably wanted to argue with people about certain things. But as God is softening people's hearts and he's bringing them closer to him, there is revelation being revealed and we're more uh, receptive to the Holy Spirit. But Brothers and sisters, time is short. Heaven is real. It's there. I no longer have faith that it's there, brothers and sisters. I no longer have a hope that's he that heaven is real. I know it's real. If you are out there and you don't know, and if you're sitting idly behind thinking that just saying the words are going to be enough, brothers and sisters, then I, I beg you, please turn to Christ. Turn to Christ, brothers and sisters. God will spew the lukewarm from his mouth. A lukewarm person believes. Just like the devils, they tremble. But guess what, brothers and sisters? The difference between a person that's lukewarm and on fire for Christ is their works. And I think it's uh, James 18, I believe it says. You know, But some may say, thou hast faith and thou hast works. But I say, show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. I testify to you, brothers and sisters, that God does not want you idly behind, relying just on your belief. Uh, God wants you to start putting your belief in action. He wants to make your fruit. He wants to make that, that tree of fruit start to bear a precious fruit, fruit, brothers and sisters, that helps bring others to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, I, I also testify to you, and I will say it over and over, just as John the Baptist got there and he Witness to people and he said you need baptism brothers and sisters. I say you need baptism You need to follow the example of Jesus Christ who knew no sin But yet to fulfill all righteousness set down by the Father had need to be baptized in the water So I say unto you are you any better than Christ that you have no need to be baptized? I may I know it may seem to you that it's not important You know, it's a uh, it's just going in the water but brothers and sisters, God gives no commandments that he shouldn't, that he doesn't want us to fulfill and that we can't fulfill. I mean, I say unto you, if you have any doubt, then I say it's only two, three, four, five minutes, right? Why chance it? Just do it. And if it, if you didn't need it, then great. You know, great, you know, it's a great thing. But I testify to you that you do. And I testify to you that we are in the very last moments before Christ comes back. I don't know when, I don't know how long, but the thing that God keeps telling me is that it's imminent and that it can happen at any moment so be prepared brothers and sisters because the great and terrible day of the lord is at hand and i say these things in the name of jesus christ amen hey bud it's mom hey i'm just thinking about you and just wondering if you're doing okay it just seems like your heart's been really really heavy and i know you said you didn't want to talk last night but I was thinking I might could catch you as you were getting into work, but um, I'll just catch up with you later. I love you. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye. Dear Mama, I was never a fan of the implications of committing to a one-on-one face-to-face -on -one situation. You can put me on stage and I'll speak with no nerves to a nation, but I get butterflies in my stomach when a one-on-one -on -one conversation is what I'm facing. And my friends will say that's just Clayton, and I'd agree with an exclamation. I guess all these years of keeping things bottled up has given me a reputation of a guy who isn't afraid to jump on stages and shout into mics, but's terrified when it comes to opening up about what's going on in his own life. I'm trying to change that, but it's not the easiest thing to do. So I decided it was time to talk to you. You're beautiful, it's true. And I wouldn't be standing here today had it not been for you. You are a woman among girls in a world that hurls hatred at godly women yet embraces dirt like it's valuable pearls. You are more precious than rubies, more lovely than gold. And best believe I've listened to every bit of advice that you've told because charm is deceitful, beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. And right next to that verse I wrote your name. And to be one and the same is my ultimate aim because I just want to be like you. So I decided it was time to write you. 
tell you how much you mean to me. Because sometimes it seems to me that life seems to be an endless pursuit of fleeting things in a world of worthless scenery, but then I see you and I get a whole different view. And I wish I could take that picture in a frame or maybe even get a tattoo to remind me that there's more to life than a pointless pursuit. And it didn't matter if I was 10 or if I was two, you still sat me down and told me truth. And I remember that old house on Beachwood Drive. And when I go back, I start to cry as memories of our past lives flood my mind because I see us there and I remember our lives. And I remember those bedside talks on those lonely nights. And you'd say, son, you have the potential to be great. And we talked so late, I couldn't keep my eyes open the next day. But that's okay, because your words helped my boldness grow. Even when we thought we were losing dad because the doctor said so. But you said let go and let God. So I let go and I let God take my burdens far, far away as I sneak into your bedroom and watch dad lay in a state of pain that made the 10 year old me beg God to take it away. But he didn't take it away. And I'd go back to my bed and I'd lay there and pray and I could hear you say, Clayton, it's gonna be okay. Trust and obey. And I'd wake up in my puddle of tears the next day and the next day and the day after that. But those tears advanced me in years and made me a man when I was surrounded by boys as my peers. I had to grow up quick. I thought Don and I would have to provide for you since dad was so sick and I was only six. And those days I don't miss. But they made me the man I am today nevertheless. And now I never want to do less than impress. So if it's a film, a novel, or get this off my chest, I will not rest until I do my very best to make you proud. You taught me to live life for more than a fickle pursuit of fame and forge, but rather to faithfully follow my savior forever mama. So many storms we've weathered together. My love for you cannot be measured. And when I pin this, I meant this. I am thankful to have witnessed your faithful witness. I was raised by a queen who taught me to chase my dreams. And I won't stop until these dreams become a reality. I love you, mama. Those talks by my bedside turned a boy into a man who wasn't afraid to stand on his own two feet, look the world in the eye, and preach. And for that, all I can say is thank you. I love you, and I'm proud to be your son. You've come in the final day.